We are live. Great to be here. This is called Fostering Abundance to Shape America's Role in the World. And that's a pretty lofty title. And I know Harassus, this go around is about shaping America's role in a post pandemic world. And we won't get caught up in the is this really a post pandemic world? Is this the new normal? We won't get caught up in that conversation because I know we could. Um, But uh, I'm just going to kind of read the description of this panel just so everyone's clear who's listening or watching as to what this is about. And so with the end of the pandemic, there is hope to achieve the common goals of opportunity and prosperity for all in the U.S. and elsewhere. So we ask two questions. What evidence is there for an abundant future? How can we shape America's role in a more abundant world for tomorrow. And before I introduce our panelists here, um, just, you know, the pandemic's been tragic, really, on so many levels, but there's always good in the negative. I personally have been amazed at all the good I have seen, and my wife and co-founder and CEO of King & Justice is here with us today as well, She and I actually took a world tour across eight countries and 40 cities during COVID. And so it really helped us to see that this was a collective experience and we saw so much more good than bad. And, you know, so and then, you know, if I if I bring it down to a practical level, um, there's a greater sense of strength, resilience and innovation. Businesses everywhere. America and beyond are offering new services. There's a recognition that sick days are important, right? There's, there's more appreciation and gratitude for life. There's a greater connection with nature because for a while, that's all we could really enjoy outside of our, our homes. Uh, there's stronger family connections, Shortly uh, after the lockdown began, carbon emissions dropped around 25 percent and the resulting reduction in air pollution was actually visible from space. Thought that was really cool. And there's a recognition that the education system needs an overhaul without getting into the, the politics of it. You know, so it's actually a good thing when parents are able to get more involved in their children's education. I think we can say there's, there are overall, generally speaking, healthier lifestyle habits. And one thing that excites me is that I've seen a lot more accessibility for disabled people in the workplace. Um, there's a more global diverse workforce now because now with the new norm of Zoom and so on, platforms like Run the World, we can really align ourselves with people anywhere and everywhere in the world. If they're a fit, they can join our team. That excites me greatly. And a more flexible work schedule. And working from home is more acceptable. And then this is kind of funny, but better hygiene. We could have fun with that. But I could go on and on. There's just a a lengthy list just to kind of get our, our mind into that, that, positive side or abundant side of things. There's just, yes, there's lots of negative. And we so easily get caught up in the negative, whether it's news and so on, but yet there's so much positive happening. And so my aim today is partly just to kind of restore divine equilibrium, bring more positive into the conversation so that at least there's a, a balanced perspective And then, you know, back to the description of this panel with the end of the pandemic, even though that's debatable, there is hope. And it's not he or she who gives the most hope has the most authority and the right kind of authority. So we just want to be messengers, if you will, or ambassadors of hope today. And then we believe that there really is abundance for all. And so we want to just bring it down to just, we want to enjoy a conversation for the time we have here about abundance. And I want to introduce the panelists here. 
some of my favorite people on the planet. That's actually sincere and real for me. Um, I'd like to introduce first and foremost, Monique Justice. She's the my wife, but co-founder and CEO of King and Justice. Uh, been around for 36 years. We've worked with 100,000 plus organizations across 60 plus countries. Welcome, Monique. Thank you for joining this conversation. And then GK. GK is the chairman and CEO of Nanban, a group of companies changing the world in really, really big ways. I'll let you guys introduce yourselves and say a little bit more here in a moment, but just out of respect and honor. And then last but not least, the last shall become first. I call him Mayor Conrad Lee, or for short, I like to call him the mayor. One of the most liked and respected guys in the greater Seattle area since we were there for a long time. I know this to be true, but personally, um, I've just enjoyed the relationship with you all of these years. So let's let's talk about fostering abundance and may this conversation somehow influence or shape in some way, shape or form <laughs> America's role in the world. So what uh, Conrad Lee earlier, you said it so well. You said this is the best topic, and I agree with you, but the best topics can be the most challenging. But let's just kind of ease into the subject. Who wants to to go first? Just, just freely speak. I'll do my best to try to moderate here. What is abundance and what does it mean to you? How do we foster abundance? Absolutely. Nanban Rick, thank you for inviting us to this amazing platform. We can have a great conversation here about this great subject. See, abundance to me is the way you describe, you know, we, the human race was hit with pandemic. Uh, like it happened in 1920s, later on. But every time as human beings, we are very resilient. We faced it, we came out of it. If you look at the life cycle of the technology that humans have created, um, the vaccine was found within nine months. In the past, it used to take years to figure out. So our human intelligence has allowed us to figure that out through artificial intelligence. The entire, um, you know, the DNA has been mapped and everybody knows how, um, not everybody, the researchers know how to take the structure of DNA and create new vaccines in record time. So we are very resilient without, you know, so we evolved. Human beings have been evolving. That's why if you look at the in the stack of living beings, human beings are at the top. And so that itself creates abundance, right? Mm -hmm. We figure out new, new technologies, new way of evolving. Um, and then technology enabled us to take out all those negatives that happened due to pandemic. People are able to do the same work from home using technology. Mm -hmm. Zoom, which was nothing two years ago, is a prominent tool for us to work with each other. The distance between all of us have been reduced because of the evolution of technology. And uh, mm -hmm. you are absolutely correct. We are realizing how important this planet is. And if you don't take care of this planet, we're all going to suffer, right? All this pandemics are the warnings of that uh, so people are we're seeing that um, i'm not getting into politics but the current administration is definitely very big into environment sustainability a lot of programs have come people all around the world are committing to take care of this planet and all of this great thinking 
is absolutely create going to create abundance in the world so we all can prosper together in us absolutely is playing a very very prominent role as the most development nation in the whole world um, very stable government very good environment for entrepreneurs to really prosper availability of technology freedom of speech there are so many great things that america provides um, it's, it's really creating that abundance mindset and being out there and our hearts uh, go to our uh, nunbans from ukraine we express our solidarity solidarity to them we are with you we will support you uh, those kinds of things we just have to we should that should never happen in this world right so we so are true. with them and um, so i let uh, mayor conrad lee and nunban monique share their thoughts but those are my initial thoughts thank you really quick for everyone listening what does nunban mean gk Nanban, um, that's the name of our company. Nanban is a very fast-growing financial investment platform and firm. But we don't take pride in knowing how much money we are making. We take pride in knowing how many people we have helped unconditionally. And Nanban means a true friend who always helps his or her friends without. expecting anything in return and we have seen this we create we started this grassroots movement called nanban just to help others unconditionally with the knowledge that we have we want to as part of this abundance mindset we want to share what we have so that the humanity can benefit from it and thank you for this platform that rick and monique uh, they have and uh, many other nanbans have joined us So Nanban has no caste no religion no nationality no borders so we when we are meeting somebody we call each other Nanban it always starts with Nanban we don't say Mr Mrs sir madam nothing like that everybody is Nanban to us so that's how we treat each other at a human being level we don't care whether you are rich or poor or whatever it is we are here to serve you unconditional that is what nanban is and uh, we are very happy to be in us and uh, from this great country we are able to impact the world in a very positive way we can just stop streaming now <laughs> <laughs> i mean yeah. if the whole world just did that if nothing else if that message permeated America and the global society all of humanity learned to just help not expecting anything in return to help true friends unconditionally yeah we we changed the world solve abundance for humanity yeah it's such a simple but powerful and timely message thank you gk namba gk Nanban Rick thank you and thank you Mayor Conrad Lee and or Nanban Conrad Lee <laughs> thank you Nanban Nanban yeah i love to call me Conrad or you know and Nanban i just learned this word it's just amazing i couldn't agree more and it's very uplifting to hear what uh, GK just said and i think what he said i got out of one of the which is people we're talking about individual human beings and uh, regardless of country regardless of where they're coming from it's us and we're doing it for other people for all of us because we're all part of all that and uh, so i i want to compliment you know <laughs> monique and uh, rick for picking this topic and this mm-hmm. is probably the most important but the most challenging and the most uh uh visionary uh mission we want to accomplish you know i just uh, sort of look through the whole session horasus had this today you know all morning all day long and it's just amazing speakers amazing topics they're touching on everything from religion to business to high tech to health to anything <laughs> where people who talk about them but ultimately it's what we are talking about it's people 
how do we make use of all those things people are working on as possible to benefit, to enhance our well-being, right? I mean, we're we still working progress. That's how human history is working progress. We want to be better, we want to live better, we want to have better well-being for all. And we, we go forward a few steps, sometimes we go backwards a few steps. Like you mentioned, we go through this pandemic. It's just amazing what health crisis, you know, uh, uh, negatively impacted so many people economically, uh, socially, and uh, but this benefit out of us. But how? Because we have all the well, where, where with the war technology, we hopefully we have more information. We have more ability to communicate, so we can or. You mentioned those words importantly. We, 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 we have to work collectively. We have to work together to solve these uh, you know, problems and challenges. And uh, so, uh, you know, I, I hope that this is really uh, the roots of how to utilize all the amazing uh, things that we have for the benefit of people. So it comes from people. So when you use the word abundance also, you know, how do you describe abundance? <laughs> I, I know people, I have been in Africa. I apologize. I don't know why my phone is ringing. <laughs> I closed it, but it's still making noise. Uh, anyway, people are very poor, but they are very happy. Sometimes the lifestyle is family, it's individual how to treat, how to respect each other. So I think abundance is almost a relative term. There are people who are billionaires, and to them, that's not enough. They're not, you know, to other people who are not rich, but they have satisfaction of themselves, what they can give based on their ability and their background. And they're able to help other people. And so in fact, sometimes we see during this pandemic, uh, good thing is, you know, we, 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 we have a lot of constraints. We have to change the way we live, but we are adapting them so well. These technology, you talk about Zoom, the platform we are on, virtual meetings. We are, we are, we are becoming so much more productive. You know, we're meeting like this. We're able to meet people from all over the world in a short span of time and discuss so many ideas. And so it's, it's just amazing. But at the mm-hmm. same time, it brings pressure. So it all goes back to our individual. How do we cope with it? And that comes from our mm-hmm. own uh, uh, perspective. You know, we look at it positively, like you're talking about, right? People can be blessed no matter where they are. You know, that's one thing I believe, as we just earlier talked about, uh, you know, the truth and the things that will be most beneficial to people that would impact most people is it's it's simple it doesn't to be complicated uh, I, I feel it's a, it's a feeling I always feel that something that helps me uh, to be able to be in politics for that many years you know uh, if people don't know that I've been on the council for 28 years working you know not working serving the community of Bellevue just one 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 position uh, and because I believe I am blessed from what I have, I have more I can provide to help other people, helping the community as a whole, you know, based on my ability. When I first started, you know, without being elected to council, my ability to help my own family, help myself first. I'm an immigrant. I came here. You know, my ability to just help me myself, just get yeah. a job, get enough food on the table. And then pretty soon I feel, you know, wow. Well, with all the people, with all the resources, with the uh, with the abundance that's around me, uh, surrounding me, and I feel that I have that ability to to have some of that abundance and to share with other people, to other people, so they have the abundance. I hope that they feel they have the abundance that we can all help. So this you know, true friend, trust the friend, you know, is really one reason that we feel that we are connected, we can we are able to share and do more. So uh, I, I, I certainly really believe that this is a, a very great, important topic. And this is the beginning 
of you know discovering and utilizing all the tools that we have uh, to share and help the community and other folks. So I'm looking forward to uh, you know developing some of all this, and it's not going to be easy because sometimes people are looking for concrete things. And right. sometimes we we can, we can, it's not so ready. And concrete things apply to people differently or with different uh, different type of blessing abundance. But I believe that uh, we uh, can uh, use that, tour that, and change people's like you said heart mm-hmm. and soul. You use the word you know we need to have hope, right? We need to have sometimes we. I think most of the time, universally, simple ways, love can influence people. Love can change people. Love can help people to have more hope. And this is really one of the biggest uh, two, <laughs> the biggest challenge we have. You know, it's challenges. Mm-hmm. How do we always have love? How do we, you know, conquer hate? You know, again, we saw social change the last two years. You know, the racial strife. So we develop a lot of people with hate. Mm-hmm. You know, either way, both sides, every side of the equation, we have right. anti Asian hate, anti this hate, right. anti that hate. And we need to make sure, you know, while well, we can temporarily maybe uh, minimize some of that hate. So, well, we give you lots of money, but money is not going to be here forever. And money, the money is going to be relative. Pretty soon that's going to be worn out. But I believe. The basic truth is we have to love them. By doing that, that's going to be there. Yeah. It's going to be permanent. And it may not be so readily available, but may not be as concrete. But I think we need to persist so we cannot give up. We need to continue to have faith, hope, and never give up to show them, to give them the most, the simplest, but the most effective quality that we have. Yeah. And so all those things then will be manifested, demonstrated in all the discussion about financial system, technology, whatever we do, that include, you know, the feeling of loving people, giving yes. people, sharing with them, and we are together, mm-hmm. united. That's beautiful. That's incredible. And I love the focus on, you know, the solutions, concrete, abundant solutions, if you will. And then, you know, I was thinking as you were speaking, just maximum growth um, occurs at the border between support and challenge or positive and negative or love and hate. And so despite all of the negative, whether we're talking about COVID and, you know, all the tragic things that occurred and the deaths that occurred around the world or the current situation in the Ukraine and, and there's always negative. There always has been, always will be. But at the same time, there's all of this positive. And so so it still serves. We like to say every piece serves. And so, again, maximum growth, the as GK, as you you said it so well, that evolution, you said that is abundance. And I love that because it's that transformation, the, you know, however you want to say it, the the increasing consciousness, the evolution, the, you know, all the wonderful ways that we can talk about the the just the transformation that's occurring, um, it's it, it, it's able to do that or thrive and, and, and evolve because we've got both of these dynamics at play. And so I see it as a positive thing when you see that the negative serves and, and the positive serves. The hate is terrible, but yet there's there's love. There's an improvement of love and uh, that that can occur. And we're all evolving. You know, maybe there's a percentage of, so-called deviants um, in societies around the world. But overall, I see just kind of this general up-leveling of, of humanity. And every, every, every heart, the human heart is the same. As I've lived and worked across 60-plus yes, countries, right. you know. And so anyway, so, so incredible to hear you guys speak in your wisdom. Um, as GK put it, none but Monique. Love to hear your, your thoughts um, and input. What is abundance and can we foster it? How do we shape America's role, of course, in the nation, but the world? Well, thank you. It can seem so daunting at a time like this, but there's, 
you know, as we were saying earlier, and that was mentioned, there's been many times in the world that we've gone through. Uh, GK mentioned that, that there's been war, there's been, you know, there's been illness, um, and we we have gotten through it. Um, but really, um, what's been mentioned, I love, is that basically we are closer and united more together during these during this adver- you know, adversity, um, it starts with the abundance mindset. You're right. It has been mentioned. If you do not have an abundance mindset, you're going to go into scarcity mode. Everything comes from an abundance mindset. And in, uh, I know this from doing uh, we, in King of Justice. We have King of Justice well-being. It's been around the world. And we talk about abundance in different ways. We talk about it. There's spiritual abundance. There's personal transformation. There's emotional well-being abundance, there's family abundance, there's fun abundance, there's money, right? You have your financial and economic abundance. There's giving. I love that. Uh, the non-giving. I love I love that. And Conrad, you've given your time just as much and, and so much to the community. And the community, uh, by one person giving to the community collectively, you're, we're united. There's also uh, just things like home environment, your home environment. There's abundance in that. And sometimes it's the simplest thing. You may not have a lot of money or things like that at, you know, at different times in your life, but that doesn't matter. And GK, you're absolutely right. Uh, Abundance really is about pure joy. It's pure joy. That's where it comes from. The more that you can give to yourself, you can give to others. And I know I love that, Rick, you talk about this. You talk about in um, in an organization, the organization will grow at the pace of the human transformation. And when the only way we can transfer really is coming from love. And we what do we, we say this oftentimes we say genius is a function of love, not intellect. And of course, you want to be competent and you want to have intellectual things and we want to have advanced technology. Um, And you can have all these wonderful uh, advanced platforms and technology and you can have all the money in the world. But if you're not coming from love and pure joy, there's no abundance to be had. Um, It's really interesting right now at this particular time, our hearts go out to the people in Ukraine and the rest of the world. and uh, those people who are suffering. And I want to say this, that they're collectively, it's so interesting that we have all this technology and we are closer together than before. I don't think there's been anything documented at, uh, I believe, during any time of war or anything um, of this nature where we have had this much technology. So we actually feel like we're there. And so as we go on these journeys and, and collectively relate emotionally to each of these individuals, we can give more in a, in a way that, that can bring abundance and joy into their own lives. Yes, there's, there's going to be, you know, a challenge and there's going to be adversity, but it, but just being alive and being, and being grateful that we have so much to give more to give. um, We can prioritize that. Another thought is this, is um, I know during COVID and uh, during, you know, just different times, but especially during COVID, it was actually a very interesting time personally for us. And uh, it was actually a time where we were more grateful than ever before. Gratitude can change your perspective. It's the best lens ever. It's the simplest things. It's enjoying who's in front of you and at your kitchen table. It's enjoying, it's enjoying that cup of coffee or that tea. It's enjoying, it's, when it starts there, everything else will come. And I know this, um, getting to know GK even more. Um, I love the fact about non-bond and about just giving, um, but he has come so much from a selfless heart. He, uh, he, he is not, there's no, it's not self-centered. It's, uh, it's other centered. Um, and what I love is that more has come back. 
So if we can at least give a little bit, and many people will say, I don't have anything to give. Give something so simple. There's more collective. When we take everybody collectively together, there's energy to that. There's so much power and energy to just give to the world, even through technology like this. Um, you can change somebody's whole day and whole life through that. And now is not the time, but Rick does have an amazing story sometime to share about a woman who gave, um, a, she just smiled through the grocery store in Japan. This American woman, she was just smiling. And um, years later, this lady came up to her and said, you are the lady who smiled at me. And she said, well, you know, I just smile. I don't remember you. I apologize. And she said, you know, I was going to take my life that day. And I was going to take my, but because you smiled at me, it changed my life. So please don't underestimate the power of what we can do individually. We don't need to compare. We all have gifts. We each have our own purpose. We need each other all together. Now, there's more. There's so much money here on this planet, so that's not a factor. It's really how are we going to shape ourselves individually to use to really use um, better use of our money so we can create more abundance together. And I just wanted to share that. Right. This is wonderful. Thank you so much. I think when we talk about abundance, it's helpful to, to say total abundance, well-being and economic, you know, abundance. I think when we think of abundance as it's in every area of our lives and then economic abundance is really a piece of that economic abundance, you know, for each one of us, every citizen in the world. Um, I think that it puts it into a helpful context. And then, you know, it's we've written so many books and the exercise is one in wisdom and clarity, but it really helps us just put some framework to these ideas. It's not my place to tell you what abundance is per se, but I can tell you that there's a global and American call it grand challenge, which is people haven't really learned how to love and how to live and how to give and how to enjoy. And when you know what the 12 domains or areas or fields of your life is, as Monique was talking about, then abundance and well-being and total abundance well-being around the whole of your life becomes something much more exciting and compelling and practical. And, and so it gives us a framework by which to define abundance and to go about talking about, starting the conversation, and beginning to look for the grand challenges. I introduced, I don't take credit for much, but I introduced the term grand challenges over 40 years ago. I'm that young. And today it's mainstream like sushi. It's so cool to see um, that languaging embraced, not just adopted, but fully embraced all over the world. Increasingly, we're seeing people wanting to, to actually solve grand challenges, global grand challenges. Lately, we've been playing with the word universal grand challenges. And so I, I, I look through different lenses, different frameworks. Charlie Munger, in a conversation with him one time, he called it a lattice work of mental models. And so here's one. When we look at abundance and, and solving abundance in America and every other country in the world, I think there are seven what we call spheres of society. And so if you're a leader, everyone's a leader. You don't need a title to be a leader. Just to be human is to be a leader. You're a leader of your own life, but maybe you're a leader of a team, a family, a team, a, an organization, many organizations like everyone on this call. Society is made up of family and religion and education and media and entertainment and business and government. We don't have time to unpack all of those, but it's helpful to when you think about when we start talking about abundance is how do we solve abundance for the family? 
how do we uplift or solve abundance, improve abundance for religion across religions? I love GK where you were, you know, it's, it's, there's no caste, no religion, no borders, all of those things that Nanban is in the world and may the world be more like that. And so, but we have religion. Now, I don't want to go there. I want to tread lightly and carefully here. But I still think after living and working across 60 plus countries, Conrad Lee, you said love. I think it's about love. I mean, religion, hopefully, is about improving our love. And we can all look in the mirror every day and say, am I improving in my love or not? You know, in my case, I can ask my wife, ask my parents, those closest to me. Uh, you know, so may it be an authentic thing. Education. How do we solve, you know, abundance in the context of education? Our children are our future leaders. They're actually our leaders now in so many ways. Media, entertainment. I mean, just stories of abundance. More of those making their way into the entertainment piece. There's nothing wrong with fun leisure and or entertainment, but we can solve abundance even in that profound fun and leisure context. But everyone here, I think we're, we're, you know, Mayor Conrad Lee in the context of government has a front row seat slash you're in the seat, (laughs) you know, of, of, of a local government and you for 32 or 28, 28 years 28 years have been able to see the impact that a government can have. And so when you bring abundance into that context, the possibilities become extraordinary. And then GK and or, you know, Monique at King and Justice, GK at Nanban, you know, it's business. I think business, this is my, you know, a little bit of bias here, but more than ever before, has a profound opportunity to change the world. The only way to be viable in business is to create value. And when a business from purpose, so from authenticity, goes out to not just create value, but solve real things, real problems, real challenges, businesses aren't just viable and get a, you know, give a return to their investors or stakeholders. They get to play a critical role in changing the world. So that's one framework. So I want to open it up. Did, did anything resonate with you guys? And please share your wisdom. GK. <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely. Nanban Rick. Uh, <laughs> you know, even though we may be in a business, right, the non, uh, as I explained, Nanban's philosophy is to uplift everybody together. Mm. Um, so we, as Monique said, Nanban Monique said, we have a, a great way of consistently generating returns for our investors, but we don't want to leave anybody behind. That is our abundance mindset. Mm. You would rarely find any company in the world that is actually sharing their secret sauce with anyone who wants to learn. Because we truly understand not everybody is in a position or qualify to invest in private funds. And I'm, I really applaud you and Monique for taking your strength and taking your um, the platform that you have to help others by launching your abundance fund. It's going to help so many people. So I, I look at fund from a very different perspective. Unless we take steps to bring something to our non-burns, their wealth is not going to improve. Right? They're still stuck with keeping it in the savings account or taking risky bets, all those things. Mm-hmm. So we are using our abundance mindset to share what we have with the world. Mm-hmm. And uh, as far as non is concerned, we have you know, our patented GK strategies after my name that came into existence in 2001. Since then, we have touched 100,000 people, but 
the whole thing is we don't want to keep this knowledge with us we want to share it with anyone who wants to learn so we have our quarterly free webinars extensive webinars to teach people how to generate consistent income on their own with uh, 100 percent consistency that is the key and we're sure you when I hear you, I hear make generosity your growth strategy or don't forget to include generosity in your growth strategy. And then I'm hearing the, you know, like that whole idea of give your best. Yeah. And if you'll do that, you'll receive even more. And it's not about just the receiving of more, but you do. There is benefit to giving and giving more and giving your best. And I know from my relationship with you, I know that you give your best and you don't hold back. Exactly. So the, the belief that we have is, as Nanban Conrad Lee also said, help each other, right? Open your heart. And what we believe in is what we have, we share it with everybody. If people learn it, use their own resources to generate some extra disposable income. Earlier, it's just me and my family were helping somebody who was in need. Now, 100,000 people who have learned they are helping others unconditionally. Now, through this platform, when we reach more people, they are going to help millions of people. So imagine the multiplier effect of this abundance mindset. What Nanban is, or what Nanban Conrad Lee has done throughout his life, is that mindset, which is very, very key. Don't be narrow. Open, up, open it up. Recognize everybody as valuable in your life. Right. Just help them as human beings. Open your heart. So I really applaud this discussion. Thank you, Rick, for leading it. You're welcome. Thank you so much. May I add something? Please. When it inspired me what GK was saying. Uh, it's to reshape America and the world. We basically need to make the um, abundance exponential. He said, multiply, we just need to make it exponential and and really live to our highest values because you will fight for your highest values. And so collectively, we can just um, multiply that, as GK said. I know you've actually helped more than 100,000, but if we go with 100,000, that easily become the ripple effect of that easily becomes a billion plus. Yeah, absolutely. And and it's just, it's so amazing. We actually raised $400,000 one time to see if we could track or trace the ripple effect of a particular person's life. It was impossible. And so a hundred thousand, I don't judge me if my math is wrong, but I think a thousand times a thousand times a thousand, it just shows you in three generations right there, a thousand times a thousand times a thousand is a billion. And there's 7.8 billion or so on the planet. And what number goes up or down in the next, you know, by 2050, you know, we don't know 10 billion or, or less, whatever, but yet it, it does matter. And, and even this, this conversation, one conversation can change the trajectory of a life and or org. So. Yeah. As the, uh, you know, politician, politician as also, also the oldest person, I always usually have the last word. <laughs> anyway, I want to just add one note uh, to what's been talked about. We talk about transformation, which is about people, which is a vision, you know, goal. It's the, uh, the ultimate. Uh, however, you know, there's a practical piece of that is what we are talking about. The actual impact that it has on individual, which includes, you know, a transaction, that's what I'm saying. The thing about people, human beings, is transformation that we talk about, the importance of transforming people, like you know, having love to love others and she. But more important, not more important, just as important, uh, you have to have the transactional piece. And right now, there's an imbalance. The transaction now is taking over everything. We forget about transformation. Though. So we, however, we need to have a balance. Mm -hmm. We need to do the transfer fate, transformational thing that can actually sustain, continue, come out of our heart. But at the same time, like, you know, everybody's been talking about GK, particularly uh, Justin. I mean, Rick, Justin, you have to have a real 
impact that change affect people's life, like you know, money, food, uh, things of that real, and that's why we have that's concrete. You know, well, I don't I don't belittle the things that are concrete, <clears throat> but I think it's important. So I think we need to do both. <clears throat> uh, so it's important that whatever we do is out of our heart, transformational, but it has to have the real impact on people that affect their lives so that they can be in a position to actually transform and actually mm -hmm. create opportunities to impact people. Out today, okay. every, yeah, every, everything's trans trans transactional. So it doesn't last long, it's short-lived. Once the fact is over, you know, they are gone. <laughs> we right. want to be sure it stays, maintains. It's because of that, I can do it, so. Wonderful, our time is up. Thank you both uh, Conrad Lee, GK, and then of course, Monique, uh, for being here, for sharing your brilliance. You guys represent the best of America. <laughs> And uh, truly, and so I, I believe today matters, and may this help a lot of people. Thank you so much. For I know, I know, there's where somebody else in the room. Is it possible you can find out that might be interested to say something? Uh, I don't no? see it at the moment. Oh, people okay. are popping in and leaving. Um, oh, okay. Uh, there will be a recording of this for sure. Yeah, Thank so you. I'm going to go ahead and stop streaming. Thank you, guys. Before, before that, Nanban Rick, you know, if you yes. see about America's role in this abundance, you see I, a classic example here. Yeah. Nanban Conrad Re, he said he immigrated, came here, played a very, very senior role as mayor of that city, Bellevue. I immigrated from India. I came here, launched a multi-billion dollar company. I'm the CEO, you know, Monique, you, all of these things, America is providing us that platform. It says, so that itself, you know, it, the abundance starts here in America. Wow. And it has a very, very important role to play. And this, and this is America. This yeah, is yeah. right here. Exactly. We, we, have, we, we are models of what America is about having the transformational, you know, and then proving that transactionally we also are impacting people's lives through what you're you know we're all doing especially number gk you know the hundred thousand people i hope that in my life i have influenced you know some number of people at least the people who voted for me <laughs> but beyond that you know hopefully there's a lot more but it's important to have that concrete demonstration and proof that it is working that it will be continued, it will be sustained. So thank you. I like to learn and get to know uh, Namban GK a lot better in the future. I'm sure I have the opportunity through Rick and through Manik. So I'm um, indeed again. That's another blessing, another piece of uh, we can help and share with other folks. Wonderful. Absolutely. Thank you guys thank so much. You, thank you. See you later. See you guys.